Hi guys, over the last couple of years, we've built a video for pretty much every feature now in analytics. And we have put them into various different playlists, which if you watched these playlists, you'd really get a good understanding as to what analytics is and what it does. We also thought it'd be quite a good idea to build like a training pathway series of videos to maybe look at different topics as opposed to set features. If you want to do reporting on analytics, these are the four or five different um, features to be aware of packaged into one video. Um, if you want to do fund research, there's probably six or seven different features to consider um, in that respect too. So again, a video on our training pathway for that within this series. Now, clearly the first video should be getting started on analytics. If you're completely new to analytics and want to understand how it works and the navigation and as I said, getting started, this is why we're recording this video. So to dive straight in, Analytics, as I hopefully you should be aware by now, is completely online. It's available on any device on the planet 24-7. And when you log in first time, this is the screen you're presented with. And I always say 95% of what you do on analytics works from this one screen left to right. Left-hand side, that's where the data lives. What do you want to look at? Do you want to look at funds? Do you want to look at sectors? Do you want to look at indices, filters, portfolios, or a mixture of all of the above? And you're building what we call an active list, a list of things to look at. And then once you've told the system what you want to look at, what do you want to do with that data? Do you want to put it into a chart, a table, or some sort of report? And then you hit generate and it loads up what you've asked it to do. Now, I said 95% of what you do is generally following that theme. The 5% that isn't, there's a tab over here on the left-hand side. Most of this is just kind of housekeeping, uh, but there are some pretty decent tools in here that we'll cover off during the course of these videos, but possibly not too much on this one. Um, now, usually the first wall someone gets stuck on is, okay, well, how do I find a fund? There's, we've got 200,000 funds-ish on the database, lots of sectors, lots of indices, lots of benchmarks. How do I find a fund uh, that I want to analyze? Now, the kind of long-winded way or the, the, the basic way of doing it is first of all saying what universe you want to look at. Now, I appreciate people watching this video might be watching from different areas of the world and you'll have different data sets plugged into your um, license. Now, I'm based in London, so I've got a kind of a UK-centric account. So don't be confused with some of these universes if you don't have access to them. It's just as my as it goes, my, my account is, is pretty generic to the UK. But if you know what fund you're after and what universe it falls into, I want to look for an investment fund. So for me, it would be Unit Trust and Week. Management Group. Okay, well, I know I'm looking for Allianz, so I can click on the provider. And underneath, hey, presto, there's all their funds. And I was looking for the Guilt Yield Fund. Now, that's probably three or four clicks of a mouse. Another one to add, add to that, add the fund to the active list. Um, as I said, that's quite a long-winded way of going about it. If I ha happened to have known that fund was just simply called Guilt Yield, I might, might not have a code. But I could have just simply typed in Guilt. Uh, I'll spell that right, Guilt Yield. Enter, it will look for all of the funds in the unit trust and week universe called Guilt Yield, and there's only one of them, Allianz Guilt Yield, and I could have clicked on Add. That may have shaved off a, a second. Um, now, if I know the code, if I knew the code was um, C3XI, um, or I knew the ISIN code, the CEDL code, the city code, MEX ID, any identifier, I could have just typed it in here. I, d I may not have even known um, what universe the fund fell into, but I'll do C3X, I think that's an I. Uh, I click on add, there we go, or enter, and it found the fund or took within a split second and clicked on add. So as you can see, there's three or four different ways of getting to the same endpoint. Um, it's just knowing what these different avenues are and therefore which one is going to be just kind of a, a smidgen quicker than the other. But once you've built the list of things you want to look at, I'll just stick to one thing at the moment because it's just a, a basic recording and a navigation getting started. On the right hand side, I just want to take that data and throw it into a, a line chart over five years and generate. And this is probably the most basic thing you can create on analytics. It does exactly that. Takes what I've got on the left-hand side, takes what I've got on the right-hand side, smashes them together, and I get a five-year performance graph of the Allianz Guilt Yield Fund. Um, and once I'm finished with that, I can either PDF the, the content or come out of here and, and start again. So that's, that's kind of finding funds and getting yourself starting and starting to navigate yourself through this Kind of core home screen. Um, the other thing I wanted to um, present on this recording is how to build a portfolio, because you'll see there are quite a few features in analytics that just work on a portfolio level. Um, you'll see a lot of the reports we'll be covering off in future videos, um, the risk profiling tool, charge comparisons, 
a lot of what you do on analytics is very much dependent on the portfolios currently sitting in your system. And a portfolio is basically just, um, could be basically someone's investment portfolio or pension portfolio. They might just have one fund in that portfolio, it could just be the Allianz Guilt Yield. But more often than not, there's probably more than one fund in there. And someone might be investing on a particular platform, and they've got five funds. They might be using a, one of your model portfolios, which happens to have 10 funds, or an external model portfolio provider that has 30 funds. Um, how do you build those portfolios in the system? First and foremost, if your account is linked to other accounts, that's generally going to happen if you're in a bigger group, um, a bigger network, a bigger national IFA. Um, there won't just be your account you're accessing. It will be linked to all the others within your group. You can share data with each other, and that will be covered off in, in other videos and probably beyond the remit of this one. But if that's the case and the other accounts have already saved portfolios and when you click on that little portfolio tab this won't happen annoyingly on my one because i'm not linked to any others but when i open up that portfolio tab all of my portfolios will gravitate to the top but when you scroll right the way down to the bottom as i said it won't do this on mine it will have big bold letters saying public portfolios and there will be all of the portfolios that all of your colleagues are sharing with you um, so that's one way of getting portfolio data straight into your account. Just get your mates to share the data with you and make it public. Now, if that's not the case and you want to build a portfolio yourself, just click on new portfolio once you clicked on the portfolio tab and just build one. Um, and again, you could have the codes, you could you know, import from that main screen. Again, if I've, if I've just used all of the codes to build an active list behind this screen, so if I move this out of the way for a second, you might have 10 funds waiting on this um, so waiting on the active list behind it, when I open up this new page, you can click on that little green icon. It will import those 10 funds into your portfolio. Again, a little time saving tip. Um, if not, and I want to start finding funds again, it's just kind of the same logic that I've just explained. Go and find a provider. Again, I'm just going to stick, stick to my friend Allianz Guilt Yield. Add that across um, and keep going. Maybe it's just a portfolio of um, Allianz funds. So I can just simply click on the funds and keep adding them over and again if i know the code or the fund name i can just pop it in there and search either search the existing universe i that one if again use my my code i just search for a second ago p12 i can click on that button advanced fund search looks at all universes and it looks at every single fund within the database there it is again click on the little green arrow and ping it straight away back to into my portfolio which is there um, so I can start adding the, the funds across and then assign a different weighting uh, to each one, um, whether that's a percentage weighting or value. I may not know the, the percentage weighting, but I can start typing in the, the value of each one and it will automatically work out the percentage breakdown uh, between each one. Uh, and then I, I save it. Click on the save icon and I can save that as whatever I like. This could be proposed portfolio. This could be Mrs. Smith and her pension, whatever. And then there will be a portfolio back on this main screen. If I close this down um, under that portfolio tab, there will now be a portfolio in here. I'll just pick a random one. Uh, let's use my, um, let's just do my model portfolio. Again, there's a smart search, so I can just start typing in model three. Model three, click on add. What do I want to do with that model? Well, I'll just throw that into my five-year performance graph. So I started off with just looking at one fund straight into a chart. Now I'm looking at an entire model portfolio that could be 30 funds aggregated into one line, showing me the performance of that portfolio over that five-year term. Um, and as I said, that data then feeds into other features that will be covered off in some of the, um, the later videos that look at more kind of sophisticated parts of the system. Um, the other way of getting portfolio data into the system is using the MPS directory. So there's a little directory over here under the portfolio tools tab, that one. And if you click on this, this is if you use an external MPS provider. This could, we've got a lot of them now. I think we're up to about 70 odd and we'd be, we're adding them almost every month. So if I'm, if I'm an advisor that uses the, I don't know, the, the Invesco model portfolios or the Lion Trust model portfolios or the OpenWork model portfolios, all you need to do is click on the logo. It gives you a load of information about who they are and what they do. And you just click on activate me. It then asks you for a load of information about who you are and you click on submit. That gets pinged across to the provider, in this case, Invesco. They will say yay or nay. Well, invariably you're an advisor wanting to use their model portfolio proposition. So they're going to say yes. And the moment they say yes, that data will just be plugged into your account within a split second. So you'd have to just bear with the providers. It sometimes takes them a little time to enable you, but ultimately you're, 
you know, from the technology perspective, it shouldn't take more than a few seconds. The moment that gets enabled, your account will then have that data. What do I mean by have that data? It means under that portfolio tab, in big bold letters, it will say the model portfolio provider. That will say maybe iBoss, that will say Bruin Dolphin, etc. However many you want to enable. And to, going back to linking accounts, and maybe if your account is linked with others, by virtue of you now getting access to the Bruin models or the iBoss models, etc., all of your linked accounts will also have access to them. So they don't all need to enable themselves. So the Bruin models, just one of you does, and the others will be enabled automatically. Um, the, ben the real benefit of that is if I just go and quickly grab one of these, this, this is these are our models portfolios but it works exactly the same with any model if i open it up this is called a dynamic portfolio because I, because most models will be changing on a fairly regular basis you'll see whereas before when i just added funds to portfolio assigned a weighting and saved it as mrs smith pension she just had five or six funds in her portfolio well, well this portfolio has changed every six months so you can see all the mps data that we have will give you tabs along the top here so you can go all the way back to 2012 when that portfolio was born and it shows you what funds were invested and some of them aren't even alive at the moment but that doesn't matter we still have the data so we're still plugging it in back then and you can go all the way to current day and it will show you what the portfolio looks like today under that current tab and what the percentage splits are between each one and it just means that when you're creating a, uh, a line chart or some content again if i just go and grab that portfolio and again throw that into a, a five-year performance graph if i open this up a bit you'll see take a few seconds every single time a change has taken place comes up with a little square on that line so it's a true replica of what that model's done the true kind of evolving nature of of the model portfolio performance yes okay the portfolio has 10 funds today but it had nine funds there eight funds there 12 funds there and it's showing you the true performance of that model again this is beyond the remit i suspect of this video but you can build your own dynamic portfolios again this is clearly going to be automatic if you're using an external mps but if you are using your own internal model portfolios or if you've got a bespoke portfolio that you're managing for a client and you want to take into account all of those buys and sells there's a video on our youtube channel called the dynamic portfolios analytics tip dynamic portfolios that'll be a 10 minute video just going into detail about how you structure that and how you set it up um so i think i think we'll leave it there that's that should hopefully give you a bit of an introduction there in terms of how to log into analytics get started find funds find stuff start building things and i've always said there's no rule book with analytics there's no real set way of using the system other than that at the end of the day you've got a lot of data sitting there over here on the left you've got a load of features over here on the right hand side you are the designer go and build stuff find some data find some features and start creating some content um, as ever any questions um, there's a help desk under here contact us um, ask them any questions you have. They've got an email address and a phone number that will pop up if you click on that button and chat with an expert is also a, a direct line of communication and with our help desk, um, ask them some quick questions and they can get uh, liaise with you via that live chat. Uh, and of course, if you go onto our YouTube channel, where hopefully you found this video, uh, there's plenty of content there to keep you busy to learn more about the system. Thanks for watching.